new on Curiosity Stream. With superior armies comes superior weapons. How has innovation mechanized the battlefield? From bullets to battleships and everything in between, it's machinery of warfare. Plus, from the gross Ew. to the gourmet, mm. see how that in-flight meal lands on your tray table. On secrets of your airline food, it's all on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are twenty dollars, just a dollar sixty-seven a month. Visit curiositystream.com. Twenty million dollars, nineteen million dollars, six million dollars. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big, and Phillips Law has been fighting the too big to fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at one eight hundred Justice or visit justiceforyou.com. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Well, as we get closer and closer to the weekend... I can feel the romance. Do you feel it? It's in the air. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's what it is. What's happening this weekend? Oh, yeah. that's. Uh, don't worry about it, buddy. You just keep going about your business. It won't be a problem at all. <laughs> Valentine's Day, oh, baby. Oh, you know. Of course. Yeah. I got to go swing by Atari J and get myself a card. Ooh, yeah. fancy. Not for myself, but one for the uh, wife. Well, I think you probably should get yourself a card, too. You know, why not? Treat yourself good this year. Do they carry Valentine's Day cards for yourself? Uh, Dear you. Why are you asking me as if I've had to buy them all these years? for myself <laughs> that'd be pretty fun dear me you're yeah. doing great i bet they're out there yeah you know i really do or at least you get one and pretend it was sent from somebody else like to my favorite guy oh. okay that's saturday that's saturday getting a card that just says dear me i did I, that in middle school uh, yes yeah, you would send yourself valentine's day cards well they yeah. did this thing where they would do carnations for like a dollar and like you would you would have to pay a dollar and then they would deliver them during class so it was kind of like a status thing so one day i thought it was a great idea to buy myself like 10 carnations Huh. Aww. Yeah. See, Nara, I remember as elementary school, you would have to, like, you'd make a, a Valentine's Day card and then you give them to your classmates. But it, it, it was such a weird thing because they didn't like, say, hey, you have to make one for every classmate. It was no participation for me. It's like, pick the person you dig the most. So yeah. there's the pressure of, like, am I going to, and I remember working a deal with this girl, Tara, and I'm like, hey, I'll make you a Valentine's Day card if you make me a Valentine's Day card. Oh. That way, at least I know for sure I'm going to get a Valentine's Day card. Nice negotiations. Right, because you don't want to be the one loser. You know what I mean? Nope. It doesn't get one. Well, that Tara girl, she didn't make me a Valentine's Day oh, card. No. And it was at that moment I realized I can never trust a woman. Oh, it was that moment. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's young uh, Steve. Young yeah. Steve. If that's all. That, that, I'm seven years old. I think it's valid. And to this day, I still do not trust a single woman, or at least somebody named Tara. <laughs> well, yeah. F. Tara's. <laughs> oh well, as a matter of fact, uh, well, my wife is a Tara. She, that's her middle name. Well, it's a good thing it's not her first name. Yeah. Otherwise, oh. I would not trust her. Yeah. So you kind of trust her. Yeah, she moderately trusts. Moderately trusts her, yes. okay. But I remember being so pissed. I don't blame you. Why wouldn't I'm... she make you a card, especially if she, did she agree to it? Yes. Because I mean, sometimes people will just agree to you to get you the hell out of their space. I wonder if she was making that agreement with other guys as well. Mm. Oh, you mean The other terrible. elementary oh, school kids. So she was... Because uh... she got a few cards. Oh, she did. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, Tara probably was like, Steve, you don't understand who you're dealing with here. You ought to pick one of the kids in class that aren't as popular as I am because I'm getting lots That's of cards. That's why I picked her. I thought she was a loser like me. Well, well she showed wrong. you. Maybe she was pissed that you did pick her. Like, wait a second. Are you coming to me thinking I will not get a card no, either? I think we're friends on Facebook. I'm going to talk to you her about find this out. today. I'm going to post it on her wall. Not even DM it. Yeah. I'm not even sliding into her DMs. It's a horrible like, story. Bitch, where's my Valentine's Day card? Wow. <laughs> okay, that's a bit From 35 years ago. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you think she'll remember? I'm coming for you, Tara, and my card. There, there, there she is. There she, oh, there's Tara right there. Oh, she looks like the kind of person who oh, would get a lot friends. of cards. 
Oh, you're not friends. Oh, no. Oh, this no. Is ter- oh, so yeah. should I add her as a friend? Wow, Terry. You have a friend a request. Oh. Friend request just to post just it to and then oh. unfriend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then block her. <laughs> yeah, and block her. Friend yeah. request. <laughs> Bitch, where's my Valentine yeah, thing card? On? Blocked. And Tara's had a good life. I mean, she's got a nice looking family there. I feel like she made the right call. Whatever, man. My life's better. <laughs> I'm not miserable about, or, or bitter about this at all, BJ. No, not at all. Uh, seven years I old, was huh? Devastated. Yeah, I can appreciate that. That's a long time to carry that. Oh, happy Valentine's Day, Steve. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, BJ. I, got I hope you, are you going to buy me a card? I'll buy you a card if you do. Yeah, sure I will. Yeah, thank you. I'll get, I'll get Vicky right on it. <laughs> Vicky, buy him a nice card, will you? They make the kid feel special. <laughs> I like this text that says, my boss and, my, and his wife, they just go to the store together, they pick out cards, they read them, and then they put them back, LOL. That's actually a good call. That's brilliant. Save you just money. saved yourself like $12. Oh, when you find the card, this is what I would have sent you. Here you go, right, sweetheart. Right, right. That's actually, yeah. I mean, you know, if, if you if if you are on a budget, not a bad deal. Cars are expensive these like days. Five, six bucks a car. Well, for yeah, for my girlfriend and for Lily, I sent, I bought two of them, and it was something like twenty dollars. Oh yeah, they're not mail them. I know. Forget and, about and, it. And you want to get the fancy ones? That's the problem. They trick right. you. The ones that play music or the ones that open up and they become like this big landscape. I got Lily the one with pizza stickers. Oh well, that's good. That's the most expensive one in there. They yeah. got stickers. My biggest fear is getting one for Sid that. I didn't get her the year before because I, I gravitate towards the same exact card every time. I, I feel like every Christmas I give her a Christmas card with a penguin that's wearing a little scarf. Why? Well, you you got to mix it up, don't you? Well, I think I am until I give it to her and she's like, you gave me this exact card last year. <laughs> wow. You did not do that. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude, that is that is egregious. Well, what am I supposed to keep? A, a, a file of Christmas cards that well, I've gotten in the past? I mean, seriously, what are the chances that you will get her the same exact card that it doesn't rem- it doesn't remind you of it? You don't remember yourself? No, I just know that she likes, what's that brand, Papyrus or Papyrus? Oh, those. that's not cheap, by the way. I know. Those are, <laughs> yeah. But she likes those cards, and I always gravitate towards the one I think is the cutest, and it's always the guy, that, it's always a penguin. And you have no idea that you it's the same card. Well, now I do. <laughs> now I do after basically going, wow, I'm the, I really am the worst. Simple solution. Go there and buy like five cards at once, different cards, and just save them for every year. I'll lose them. I remember where I keep those things. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> Dude, forgot. see now the Vicky's got a good life hack, but I do understand your point because I buy people stuff. And I remember my wife's aunt was the same way. She go, "I bought you a nice Christmas present. I have no idea where it is." <laughs> <laughs> Here's the keys to my house. If you can find it, you can keep it. Oh man, I mean, she passed away recently, and I'm thinking that when they go through all her stuff, I'm going to get my present. Hopefully, she'll they'll find it and I'll get mailed to me. It would be so nice. I don't know what it is, but I'm expecting a present. Unless those kids took it themselves. Mm-hmm. Sons, of, sons of anarchy. Oh, well, happy Valentine's Day, BJ. <laughs> yeah, good job. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> Thanks for the card. Here's a question for you. Why would someone steal a fire truck? Well, Steve's going to tell you why. He's got the mix report for you at 617. BJ and Mix mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. $20 million. $19 million. $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. Wenatchee is gorgeous in the spring with its lush green rolling hills, abundant wildflowers everywhere, and the views of the Columbia River. The local food scene offers an abundant selection of authentic international cuisines featuring the unique farm fresh ingredients of the region. Wenatchee is also home to award-winning wines, handcrafted hard ciders, and a talented handful of local brewers producing fine craft beers. Visit Wenatchee, the heart of Washington State. 
New on Curiosity Stream. Deformed trees, mutated wildlife, and no humans for miles. Ten years after the disaster at Fukushima, see what this irradiated ecosystem can teach us about nuclear fallout on Radioactive Forest. Plus, looking for the most diverse marine life on the planet? Dive into the Coral Triangle and experience a frenzy of wildlife you've got to see to believe on nature's greatest secret. It's all on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. 99.9 99.9 KISW The Rock of Seattle. Well informed on the issues of the day? Not this guy. Live from the KISW News Center in downtown Seattle, this is The Mix Report. Well, thanks, you guys. Thanks to Advanced Hair Restoration for giving us the major report. And today's your day to listen to some Nirvana, BJ. Oh, really? Put on your flannel because today is National Flannel Day. Which is like pretty much every day in Seattle. That's a good point, buddy. When summer ends. I and mean. it's chilly, man. It's like 28, 20 something out there. It ain't cool. No. I mean, it's, it's actually cooler than cool. It's chill. It's also the day to celebrate cream cheese brownies. I haven't had Ooh. a cream cheese brownie. I don't know when the last time I've had a cream cheese brownie. I don't know if you know this, but I think those chocolate cupcakes in there have cream cheese on them. I had one yesterday. All right. Show's over. Got to yeah. go. I, I, I was surprised because the I had the vanillas. They didn't. So I hope there's one left for you, Steve. I'll, well, hopefully. If not, I guess I'll have to continue to do the show. All right. Well, I mean, at least it's cream cheese something. Man, cream cheese. Just an underrated addition to any food. Yeah. Sushi. I love it. Yeah. Hot dog. Delicious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not just for bagels. And it's not just for Philadelphia either. Very true. Yeah. They try All to right. own it, but they don't own it. There's a guy in Florida. Of course this happens in Florida. He's 32 years old. And you know what he decides to steal? A fire truck. Why? Right? I mean, at what point do you think you're going to get away with this? Someone's going to spot you in that fire truck. You can't, like, you know, do it subtly. Yeah, it's really hard to hide one of those. I'm going to uh, repaint it. No one will know. It was once a fire truck. That's right. Well, he took it for a joyride. He even got on the radio and pretended to be a fireman. Oh, that's kind of fun. Uh, other firefighters said, yeah, we could tell it wasn't a real firefighter because the stuff that he was saying made absolutely no sense. Here they are talking about it. He kept referring to himself as Firefighter 21. Within six minutes, it was gone. When they pulled in the station, they saw the bay was open, but the power cord was actually still swinging. He had access to the radios, the computer. He was saying he was going back to the station. He wanted to get into a gate. A lot of nonsense. It didn't make any sense whatsoever. And we've had a few stolen here in Lee County. Not uncommon. Uh, it happens across the country uh, uh, quite a bit, actually. Really? It's not uncommon? Why? I, would have, I, I mean, because they're little kids and they're like, like basically going, I wanted to be a fireman, so I'm going to steal. I mean, maybe like the, the ones that aren't the actual big ass fire truck, the other fire truck. I could see that happen. But the big ass one. You yeah. Think? And he says it's not uncommon. Ah, oh, man. People, stupid people do stupid things. And this happened in the middle of the day. It wasn't even like, you know, random time at night. It was like like 11 in the morning. When I feel like he was thing. probably a little high. It looks like he took not the actual big truck, but the the, 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 the smaller one. But still. Oh, Okay. Still can't hide the fact that that's a fire truck. Yeah, it's really hard. To <laughs> hey, I'm fire truck number 21. Fire How are you guys doing? Yeah. Are we ready to fight fires? Yeah. They should I, put him in like the calendar. Yeah. Just like, you know, like the oh, fireman right. calendar and just have him like just put him in like stupid poses with the hose. Yeah, what the heck? Him. I mean, that's how we should punish him. Let's get some good out of this. Right? Have some fun with it. Well, well I'm glad nobody was hurt, but. Yeah. Right? God forbid something happened where they needed that fire truck at that moment. I know. I mean, you know, Steve, and again, I think he was a little high. Do you guys still wave at fire trucks when they pass by? Yeah. I still do. Oh, do you? Mm-hmm. Oh, I, yeah, I don't do that anymore. Or yeah, even yesterday. Do, yeah. I do the little... Uh, uh. Oh, you do the horn thing? Yeah, so that way they honk at me and it makes Atta me feel boy. special. Do they really honk at you still? Some of them. Some of them just look at me like They're I'm They're probably weird. like this poor child, man child, who <laughs> needs a horn. Yeah, you don't know. I mean, you know, really, you just can't look at someone and go, you're too young, you're too old for this. I mean, they, you, gotta, you never know what someone's I mean, going through. That's a split. I mean, you have to make a quick decision if that person's too young or not, or if maybe they just like, they're just someone that really enjoys fire trucks. Yeah. Do you yeah. want to just disappoint them? That's a good point. I suppose, really, at that at the end of the day, always honk the horn. Yeah. Well, hell, even like on, I was on like a, a four or five going home yesterday, and there was a bunch of uh, military vehicles, and they had like those big ass trucks. They were going somewhere, like the oh, oversized ones. I love when you and, see those caravans. And the soldiers are sitting on the outside of it, like oh, facing yeah. it. But then it's awkward because you're like making eye contact as you're driving, and you don't know what to do. So you have something. Like, hey. <laughs> 
<laughs> like yeah. the, what's up? Yeah, it's like like kids on a bus when you're you know when you're yeah, when right. the kids are looking at you through the thing, but usually they're like being mean to you more often than not. Yes, but, but the soldiers, I mean, you give them a little, I don't know, you give them a salute or a wave or what do you? Uh, I, I just do that. Something. Hey, a little hand gesture. Yeah. Oh, what kind of, okay. Hey. I'm not gonna salute. I'm not. Hey. A, yeah. I'm like, hey. hey, how you doing? I see you over there. That's right. Cold enough for you. Oh, oh, you're gonna put. Oh, you're gonna give that it's line. Freezing out there, sitting out. Oh, yeah, no, you're right. It's cold. I just don't know if that line is really. Uh, is that what you gotta do now? Hey, we gotta head down south, BJ, for the idiot of the day. This is a guy in Portland. His name is Jeffrey, and he was driving on Saturday, doing 90 miles an hour. Okay, and he sped past a cop. Yeah. Turns out the guy was drinking and driving. Really? And he had a bumper sticker on the back of his uh, car that said, "Not drunk, avoiding potholes." I don't know if you've seen that bumper sticker. Okay, the, yeah, you don't put that on your car if you're a drunk, dude. I've I've seen ha- p- many people have that kind of bumper sticker, and I'm just like, I don't know. I mean, I feel like you're kind of bringing attention to yourself, even if you're not drunk. Do you want to? I don't know. You're absolutely right. It's I mean, a that's, funny. It's a funny bumper sticker. Ex- but I already all of a sudden I know this person probably likes to party. Yeah. You know, I mean, because it's really not. You know, it's not funny anymore to say, "Hey, no, I'm not drunk while I'm driving." It's like, dude, that was so '80s. You need to get rid of that bumper sticker. Well, yeah, they pull him over. He had a bush light, an open can of bush light in the cup holder. Oh, also had a okay. gun in the car with no oh, serial number. All right, then. They, had, they found more beer cans and a bag of cocaine. Oh, there we go. In the center console, because that's where you keep your bag of cocaine. You, sir, are a winner. And again. You made their job easier with the, hey, uh, I'm not drunk. I'm avoiding potholes bumper sticker. I mean, you're talking about profiling in that particular instance. I'm not doing coke. I just like the smell of energy. Yeah, that's it. It's another bumper sticker, I would imagine. Oh, yeah, that's another. He should have that on there. You should send that to him in prison. I I mean, I I keep my hand sanitizer in the center console. I I didn't think about keeping it. Got to be careful. They say that can catch fire on the warm weather. All right, well, good. I don't have to worry about that for a while. That's a good point. Really? Yeah, I, I guess something with the alcohol. I I, I was like, real because I was putting it in last year, and then I read an article. You know, your hand sanitizer can catch fire if the sun gets on it, and it hits it well, the right way. But the sun, it's in the center console. It's not the sun's not going to hit it. Oh, you're in the center. See, I, I don't. Yeah, it's a good oh, idea. Are you sitting out? Yeah, you're right. I probably should put it in the center console. Good job. Oh. Thanks, buddy. All right. This last story again. We're going to Florida, BJ. Woo! This guy. Well, the cops had a good deal with a guy that was standing by the road with his pants down, and his. Oh, boy. His unit hanging out. All righty. He's 23. And they're like, hey, dude, his name is Riley. They're like, why are you flashing the traffic? Yeah, what are you doing? Even though he's trying to pull his pants up when he saw the cops were coming. Okay. And he gave a very good reason. Oh, well, all right. If he's got a good reason. What do you think the reason was? Oh, man. We got to guess his reason. Yeah. Uh, he was tanning. <laughs> That's a great, great yeah. call, but you're uh, wrong. Oh, all right. Vicky, what do you think? What do you, uh, Vicky, what's a good reason? He was getting some fresh air. Getting Ooh. some fresh air. Yeah, you, need to, you need to air that baby. Danny. Up. All right. He just needed the bathroom. He needed the bathroom. Wrong. All, All right. right. That would have been my excuse, which would have been true, by the way. Rev? Uh, he put Icy Hot on his boys and was trying to air it out. Ooh. Bing, bing, bing. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, I was like, damn. It, apparently, he was doing this for justice. Justice? Says, quote, I was protesting for civil rights by showing my unit to the traffic, uh, but I'm now finished and I want to go home. Okay, so showing off your gavel for civil rights, is that what you think it is? I mean, how about you take a knee or something like, you know, other people do when they're protesting? Freedom to show my dong in traffic. Yeah. I don't remember reading that amendment. No, uh, Gandhi, I don't think did that. I think he said, look, I'm not going to have any food, but I don't remember him waving his baton or anything. One person's like, oh, great, this guy, he's giving a bad name to us named Riley. Oh, yeah, you're sorry, Riley. Yeah, all Riley's like to just whip it out in traffic. It's true. Yeah. As far as weather, 41 degrees. It's going to be sunny but cold. Uh, and thank you, Puget Law Group, for giving us the major report, and that's what's up. That's the trouble when you get the sun in the winter is that, yeah, usually it means it's colder. I'll take it. What about the sun in the winter, though? No. <laughs> I'd rather it be sunny and super cold than moderately cold and raining. Yeah, and and the cold can wake you up. It really like it's 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 almost like a cup of coffee. You go out there, you go woo. And you're just I mean, it does wake you up a little bit, and that, mm-hmm. as opposed to that malaise cold that we get, where you just uh, it's, it's, it's crisp. It's yeah, but I don't yeah. know. I just feel more awake when there's sun. So I don't care how cold it is. Now that's something you and I are familiar with coming from somewhere else. Vicky yes. Rev, do you have the same uh, you know feeling about that, or is it just too cold and you don't like it? Oh, I like the cold. I really do. Like, I'll when I get in the shower, I always rinse off with like really cold water. Oh, look at you, fancy! Uh, really? Yeah. Well, it's yeah. good for my hair. Huh? Yeah. There's no way I'm getting the hottest uh, possible uh, shower in the morning. Yeah. If the windows aren't foggy in my bathroom, I'm doing it wrong. Yeah. Absolutely. 
I tried that for a while, Vicky, but then I pulled my back out because it was so cold, and I went, "Whoa!" <laughs> and then it was like, oh. "Of course, you pulled your back out oh, that yeah. way." I, of course, I, I did. can see that. It's a that's a, a yeah. jerk motion. Yeah, I mean, I, I I go, "Okay, I'm going to put you on a little colder," and then I step out, and then I go, "All right, I'm going to step back in and pull my back out." So oh, I said, "You know what? Thank There's you. a guy Lee Hoff or something like that, or Lim Hoff, I've, Lin Hoff, who's all about like getting your body cold, and he swims in these frigid waters, and he's pretty famous on YouTube, hmm. and." I thought I'll try this stuff. You know, he says you need to get your body cold. So look at Vicky every morning. She's li- she's leading the lifestyle. Fancy. You're ready to go. Sw- you're ready to go swim in the in the frigid waters now. I'll do it. Well, crap. We got some cold ass weather coming, guys. Yeah, and, we do. Snow supposed to come soon. Yeah. I know, and I got I got game day weekend. I mean, I I want I, I want to go out to my game store now that you can go there and do it. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, twenty five those fancy ass snow tires. Just do it. <laughs> I, I want to. Yeah. But I also don't want to be the guy going. How did you run your car off the road? Well, I wanted to play Monopoly board games. Yeah, so I'm, I don't want to be the guy that they do a news story on. Go. This moron was told to stay home, but he had to go roll his dice. And so, then he rolled his vehicle. Someone brings up a point. They say, yeah, you like the cold because you work inside. Try and being out in it all day. Would you rather work outside, though, in cold, like 30-degree weather, but it's sunny, or 45, 50-degree weather, but it's raining? Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't want to work outside. Do I have well, to pick? I, mean, yeah, I, I don't uh, want to pick. I, I, <laughs> that text is right. I don't have right. an opinion of, on this survey. Yeah. None of the above. Thanks, BJ. I'm, I'm, well, listen. You have to pick one. I mean, they're both miserable because... Oh, I'm not saying it's fun either way. Oh, that's a really good question. I mean, I you know, Steve, that's a tough one. I'm going to go with the. I'm going to go with it being a little warmer. I, I, I'm so going to go with the be, warm wet. Yeah, you'd rather warm. be slightly warmer and wet than cold and dry. Oh yeah, cold and dry. Cold and dry. Yeah, cold okay. and dry the entire time. Yeah, absolutely cold and dry. At least the sun's out there, so maybe you can get a little bit of that sun. Well, sun's you, out, guns out. Being wet is just uncomfortable. Totally. Uh. Yes. <laughs> wow. Of course, this is all easy for us to say. Like the texture says, we're, we're, we're quote unquote stuck inside. Yeah, I don't know. See, that's the problem is, is that I, I, I would assume being warmer would be better. But now that you guys are all saying cold and dry, I sound like being cold. So, but you're you're assuming that you can bundle up and be okay. See, they have to take their gloves off and work with their hands like electricians and like that. And mm-hmm. that's a beating. You know, it's like one thing. When, that's why even though it's wet, I wonder if it's a little warmer, it's better on your extremities. And then on the, on the flip side, would you rather then also work in like 95 degree weather outside when you have to have all oh. your stuff on? You know, sometimes I see guys working on the houses and developments and I'm just like, oh, that's got to be just a... A beating because the sun is just beating on you the entire time. Then I would definitely go cold. Uh, cold once, and dry. One guy says, I'll work in cold overheat all day long, 24-7, 365. Well, I noticed that yesterday because uh, I was out in it. I went out in it. But you know what? It was sunny. I said, I'm getting out in this. And I was walking and I bundled up and everything. But eventually when you're working, I would imagine when I was walking, you start getting warmer. So maybe mm-hmm. the cold and dry is better. I think I might, I, I'm changing my mind. How about that? Some, someone even said, give me 10 degrees and sunny far before 40 degrees and rainy. Okay, I'm changing my mind. All right, we'll see you outside, BJ. Thanks, yeah, buddy. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Yesterday, Steve, he did get this one right. Which sport would you be playing when com- competing for the Davis Cup? It's got to be a sport I don't know much about, so I'm going to go tennis. Yes. Look at you, Mr. Guesser. Thank you. Wow. Thank you very much. You want a shot at beating Steve? You got it. 206 421 Rock. We're playing Beat Maze at 650 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. How do I know if bankruptcy is going to provide me with relief? What are the steps for my situation? Uh, There's so much information out there about bankruptcy with the internet and uh, what people have heard from friends and and other people that they've talked to about their financial issues or or bankruptcy. Uh, There's there's also a lot of bad information out there or, or urban legends about bankruptcy. In order to determine whether bankruptcy makes sense for you, you need to talk to an attorney that's experienced in bankruptcy. So in order to determine whether bankruptcy makes sense for you, you should talk to an experienced bankruptcy attorney and right my job is not to convince you to file bankruptcy my job is to help you to to make that decision and have all the facts uh, so that you can make an informed decision about whether bankruptcy makes sense for you what benefits it's going to have for you and what the downside of filing bankruptcy is thanks travis if you have more questions about bankruptcy you can reach out to travis anytime at choose the right chapter.com Wenatchee is gorgeous in the spring with its lush green rolling hills, abundant wildflowers everywhere, and the views of the Columbia River. The local food scene offers an abundant selection of authentic international cuisines featuring the unique farm fresh ingredients of the region. 
Wenatchee is also home to award-winning wines, handcrafted hard ciders, and a talented handful of local brewers producing fine craft beers. Visit Wenatchee, the heart of Washington State. $20 million, $19 million, $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com.